Hello everyone, my name is Nidruv Morali, and I'm an 8th grader that's currently enrolled in John F. Kennedy Middle School. Today I'll be presenting my 8th um, grade rock cycle project. So it's in Minecraft, as you can see around you, and let's get started. Hello, welcome to my rock cycle project. In this project, I will be exhibiting my knowledge of the steps of the rock cycle in a fun and creative way. Given that this project is in Minecraft Education Edition, please learn or review the following things before proceeding on with the game. Basic movement and interaction controls, experience with Minecraft parkour, and finally, knowing how to interact or talk with Minecraft NPCs. So let's get started, shall we? Let's talk with Dr. Aker. Hello! Welcome to ISM Laboratories, new recruit. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Aker, and I'll be your guide through the lab. Today, you have been tasked with uncovering the workings of the rock cycle. This is a very tedious and dangerous job, but I'm confident that I couldn't have asked for anyone better. Before moving on to the mission, feel free to check out the experiments that the different wings are working on. When you're ready, make your way to the Earth Science Wing, which is straight across from these doors. Okay, well, I think we should check out some of the wings. So, let's get started with this wing. So, I can see that here's a gear, so it probably represents mechanical engineering. So, and I'm right. So, you can see the experiment that these scientists are working on. These uh, engineers, shall we say. Um, yeah, let's talk to the main scientist, Dr. Rambo. Hey, rookie. I'm Dr. Rambo, and I'm the head of the mechanical engineering wing. Our team is trying to make a powerful hydrogen-powered engine. If we succeed, this engine can be used in the first generation of fully green-powered cars. Anyways, good luck on your rock cycle exploration trip. Make sure you don't get too pressured. Well, there's a nice little pun there from Dr. Rambo. And, well, wow, this laboratory is pretty big, as we can see. So, let's talk to Dr. Rajesh from the physics wing, uh, you can see from the atom right here that this is the physics wing, and then you can see what looks like a black hole that the physicists are working on. Oh, uh, hi there. Sorry, I didn't quite see you. I guess these glasses need new convex lenses. Getting back on track, my name is Dr. Rajesh, and I am the new head of the physics wing. You see, our scientists were trying to make a mini black hole. What started out small soon became very big, very fast. Before we knew it, Dr. Tyson, our previous head, got sucked in. Luckily, our physicists have the black hole stabilized. I think. TLDR, creating a black hole never ends well. That's some very insightful advice from Dr. Rajesh. Let's move on to the chemistry ring. As we can see here, you can see the different elements that they're working with. And then you can see the crystals that they're examining. Let's talk with Dr. Hyde. Hey there, bud. My name is Dr. Hyde, and I'm the head of the chemistry wing. Our scientists are working closely with the biology and geology wings to examine the medical effects that some rocks have on humans. I know it may sound silly, but I think that some form of crystal healing may actually be plausible. Let's just hope I don't discover a kryptonite for humans. Well, we certainly wouldn't want that to happen. <laughs> Excuse me. So, as we can see here, here is the biology wing because of the virus up there. A certain virus. It's, uh, it was very prominent in the last three years. So you can see what they're working on. Um, let's talk with Dr. Chow. Hello, my name is Dr. Chow, and I'm the head of the biology wing. Right now, the biologists that you see behind me are studying a bog body, discovered in southern Missouri. If we learn to recreate this technology artificially, humans might have the ability to preserve their living bodies for a long period of time. Just imagine waking up 2,000 years later after walking to, into a preservation chamber. This would take the expression, I'll love you for infinity, to a whole different level. So let's head to the Earth Science Wing that Dr. Aker was talking about. So, Dr. Aker's here. 
Hello again. I hope you looked around at the experiments in the lobby. I must say that there are some very interesting projects being worked on back there. Right now, we are in the main hallway of the Earth Science Wing. If you wish, you can check out some of the different rooms in this hallway. When you're finished, make your way to the black and yellow doors at the end of the hallway. I'll be waiting for you there. Okay, so let's check out the break room, shall we? As you can see here, there's a trash and recycling bin. Um, there's some food. And then there's a science quote. Logic will take you from point A to point B. Imagination can take you anywhere. If you can guess who said that, um, it's a very uh, famous physicist. That's the hint. Well then, I might just give you a million dollars. Let's talk with Dr. Shaw, right by the microwave. Did you hear that one of the new recruits is going into the Earth's mantle? That's a very brave thing to do. I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Aker gave them a hefty reward for their bravery. Wow, there's some foreshadowing there. Then there's a fridge. Let's talk with... Oh, there's another quote here. Uh, eat, sleep, science, repeat. Smiley face. Then there's a sink. Uh, let's talk to Dr. Grace. This is quite a lovely book collection. I'll have to refer some of these books to my friend, Miss Gruka. Miss Gruka is everyone's friend, isn't she? So there's a trash here, cycling here. So I think we're done with the break room. Oh, okay. Then right here, there's an experiment going on, an amethyst chemical energy project. Let's talk to Dr. Sergis. These fellows over here are trying to extract chemical energy from these amethyst crystals. Too bad that everybody's focused less on these smaller projects and more on the rock cycle exploration project. I wish that smaller scientists like me and these guys would get some more appreciation. Well, that's a very unfortunate situation for Dr. Sturgis. Let's go over to the marine life study um, laboratory. So here's Dr. Ursula. Before I talk to him, let's just take a tour around his lab. So you can see a little experiment here. 30 day watered sprout. Looks fine. And then a 30 day unwatered sprout. And as you can see, it's very dry. And the soil around it is very dry also. Microcosm of Zambia's coastal marine life. As you can see, it's pretty colorful. And it's very diverse. So let's talk with Dr. Ursula. <coughs> Hello there. You're the new rookie that everybody's been talking about. I imagine that you've been getting quite the buzz considering it's your big day today. Anyways, feel free to check out my laboratory. Right now, I'm studying a fungi that grows underwater. I must say that it's quite interesting. Once again, good luck on your trip. It's quite brave of you to take up such a monumental task. Well, it's quite brave indeed. Okay, well, we can make our way out of this laboratory. So, let's go to the black and yellow doors that uh, Dr. Aker was talking about. Let's talk with Dr. Aker. Your first stop as part of this exploration will be exploring the Earth's mantle. Since the mantle is quite hot, you will need some protective gear so you don't burn up. The chamber to your left holds your protective suit. You will also have a companion along with you on this exploration. He will be collecting rock samples and informing you about the rock cycle during the duration of the trip. A lot of people here at ISM Labs are counting on you. Good luck and Godspeed, as they say. Thank you, Dr. Aker. Let's head over to the suit chamber. Step inside here. And as you can see in the top uh, left corner, we have our suit on. If you can't see properly, well, you can see it right here. Here's our suit. So let's make our way over to Jerry. Hey rookie, my name is Jeremiah, but you can call me Jerry. I'll be your companion for this trip. I'm sure Dr. Aker already told you that I'll just be collecting rock samples and informing you about the rock cycle during the duration of the journey. Our first stop is to the mantle. We will be finding out how igneous rocks form. You can start your trek by going through the doors to your left. 
I'll see you there. Okay. Well, now we're gonna journey into the mantle. Okay, so I can see that we're in the crust from all the different stone and ores that's around us. And then there's more igneous rocks, from what I can tell. Some amethyst, and then there's some more igneous rocks. Now we're clearly in the mantle. We're taking some damage, since it's quite hot here. And let's talk to Jerry. Wow, it's burning down here. According to Dr. Aker, the temperatures down here can reach up to 7,230 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's just hope our suits don't melt. The orange fluids around you, you see, are molten rock. Sorry for the little, uh, what is it? Mishap there. Okay, the orange fluids you see around you are molten rock, otherwise known as magma. Meet me at the other side of this area. Just make sure you don't get too close to the hot magma. So you can see, this is a mantle, and below us is the magma he was talking about. So we have to make sure not to get too close to it, or fall in it, rather. Otherwise, we will die. So we have to do some parkour across these little rocks. And then one big jump. There. Now we can talk to Jerry once again. Hey, you made it! That was a very brave thing of you to do. Unfortunately, it looks like there's even more scarier things ahead. The magma here is highly pressurized. Basically, this whole place is gonna blow. In order to get out of the space, you're going to have to explode along with it. In front of you is a mini volcano that will shoot you up into the caves located in the Earth's crust. I'll meet you in the caves. Oh, looks like we're gonna have to blow up. Oh. Okay, well, time to blow up. Oh, no, we fell back down. We'll have to try again. And we'll have to try again. Sometimes it doesn't always work. It's volcano mechanism. Okay, so now we successfully shot up. So as you can see, that's the area we were just in. And now we're in the cave system. So there's a lot of igneous rock from what I can tell. So let's talk to Jerry. Around you, you will see cooled lava known as igneous rock and sediment. According to my observations, some magma got launched from the volcano you were just in. This magma, now called lava, cooled and formed the black rocks you see around you. Sediment is formed when rocks are weathered and eroded by water. Now you will travel through this cave system to see what will happen to this sediment. Pick up a minecart from the chest to your left and meet me at the end of this cave system. Ciao! Okay, so let's just pick up a minecart and we'll go on this little exploration through this cave system. So I can see there's less and less igneous rock and there's more of this white stuff, which I'm guessing is sediment. Now I can see a lot of sedimentary rock, otherwise known as sand. And we're in this place. So let's talk with Jerry. You just saw the process of how sedimentary rocks are formed. They are formed when sediment gets compacted into a rock form. This is done via heat and pressure. The most common forms of sedimentary rocks are forms of sand. Next up, you will see how rocks are changed and layered via heat and pressure. For now, try to find a path of rocks that leads out of this ravine. Okay, well we'll have to try and find a path. And I think it's quite clear, it's, pr it's quite colorful also, but yeah, let's make our way to the path. Okay, well it looks like we'll have to do some parkour. I 
I can't really provide much commentary here, considering it's just parkour. Okay, well, it looks like we got stuck in this cobweb. We'll have to make ourselves out. And then jump here. Okay, we made it here. Okay. And it looks like we're almost done. I think we just have two more jumps. Now one more jump. Okay, the big jump. The loop of fate. Oh, and we made it. Okay. So now we just have to find a path out of here. And, well, it's quite colorful also. We'll just make our way out of here. So as you can see around you, um, this is a very similar landscape to that of the Grand Canyon. And as you can see from the many layers, it's made up of metamorphic rock. Which Jerry, I believe, will explain to us. Right, Jerry? Hey there! The landscape you see around yourself is formed by metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are formed when rocks are layered and compacted via extensive heat and pressure. One of the most famous landscape examples of landscapes formed by metamorphic rocks is the Grand Canyon. Take a minecart from the chest to your left to see the rest of the landscape. You will meet me back at the lab. Okay, well it looks like this is our last part of this uh, extensive journey. So, we can grab a minecart from the chest, but as you can see in my inventory, I already have one. So, go. And... So you can see all around you, here's the plateau, I guess, formed by the metamorphic rock. And now you can see the different layers. It looks quite nice. Back in the lab. Let's talk with Jerry. Welcome back. I hope you had a great time learning about the rock cycle. Here are some rock samples I collected from the different stages of the rock cycle we saw. Adios, amigo. Adios, Jerry. Well, let's just check out some of those samples he corrected. Uh, he collected, I should say. So we have the igneous rock, which is the black rock formed by cooled magma or cooled lava too. And then we have our sedimentary rock. The most common type of sedimentary rock is sand. So yep, that seems to be correct. And then we have the metamorphic rock, which we just saw. That seems correct also. Nice job, Jerry. Okay, let's talk to Dr. Aker now. Hey, rookie. I heard you did a great job out there. To proceed with my research, I need you to tell me some of the things you learned about the rock cycle from the trip. You could fill out this form, that would be great. Please be able to answer the following. The three main types of rock. Well, we just saw from Jerry Samples, the three main types of rocks are igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and metamorphic rock. And then, as you can see, the second question is, so how do sedimentary rocks form? So if you remember back to the cave system, Jerry explained uh, that sedimentary rocks are formed um, when sediment, uh, which is basically just little pieces of rock that was um, eroded and weathered, um, so it happens when sediment is compacted via heat and pressure. That's what Jerry said. And then finally, the last question is, what is molten rock called? So I think um, I just explained it, but molten rock is called magma. So, we answered all of Dr. Aker's questions. Nice job. Now we can talk to Dr. Freudger. And as you can see, she's sitting right next to a giant pile of gold and diamonds. Let's think back to what Dr. Shah said, if you remember, in the break room. A little bit of foreshadowing. Okay. You must be the brave recruit that risked your life today. Hola. My name is Dr. Freudker, and I'm the head of ISM Laboratories. Here at ISM Laboratories, 
we strive for excellence. You have proudly represented this grade by exhibiting your courageousness and passion for science. This will not go without notice. Hence why I will be giving you this stack of gold and diamonds to applaud your efforts. You may come here anytime you would like. You are now a part of the ISM family. Adios. Adios, Dr. Freuker. Also, I would like to point out one more thing. There's a little Easter egg in this map. So, ISM Laboratories, some of you might be asking why I picked ISM Laboratories. What is the significance behind ISM? Well, ISM um, stands for Igneous, Sedimentary, and Metamorphic. So that's why I picked it, because it fits quite well with the theme of this map, which is the rock cycle. So now let's talk with Nidru, which is myself, the voice you hear behind this video. Hi, my name is Nidru, and I am the creator of this map. I created this map for an 8th grade rock cycle project. I enjoy science because I believe that there's always more to discover and always more to explore in this vast universe. I wanted to express this passion via this project of mine. I hope you enjoyed this map as this is my first Minecraft map that I've made. Adios! Walk through the doors to your left to restart the game. Adios, myself. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed um, this walkthrough. Um, I hope you enjoyed this map, first of all, and I hope you learned a lot about the rock cycle. Um, I spent quite a lot of time on this map. Uh, but yeah, I, I just hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be all. Adios!